All right, so uh, my name is J.R. Logan, and uh, I am here to share with you um, some learning related to the MIT App Inventor. Uh, so the App Inventor is very much based on uh, learning. So it, it's aimed at a, uh, a younger audience learning the program and to access apps. I've also found it uh, useful to very quickly create uh, an app to, to do something specific um, because it does have access to the various uh, elements of your uh, the sensors on your uh, Android phone. And uh, so you can make a real prototype of an of a Android application. You can actually package it and send it places. Um, and uh, you could even post it to the, to the store, is my understanding, though I haven't done that. Um, I have uh, played around with looking at what the accelerometer does and the compass and visualizing that. I've played around with uh, adding a button so that uh, I can open the doors at Makehaven using my phone. Um, it sends on the back end a, a, a special key. Um, and uh, I've looked at producing little games and so on. Uh, so I think without further ado, I'll um, show you guys how this, this works. Um, I will share my screen. Okay, so you should be seeing the uh, MIT App Inventor uh, homepage. And you'll log in. I log in with my Google uh, account, so it will typically ask you for an account. Um, and then you'll have your different uh, uh, your different projects lined up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually going to create a new project. And so we're going to call this learning. Um, so when it opens up, what you're going to get is a preview of your phone. And there's two primary places in App Inventor where you work. Uh, you work in this, which is basically where you build out the screen and add the different elements. And then there's this area called blocks. And this is where you work uh, on the logic of the back end of what you're working on. So to start, uh, I'm just thinking that we should do something very, very simple. And uh, we can add a button. And we'll have that button uh, play a sound. Um, so if I go over here uh, on the interface, you can see I can drag across uh, that item and drop it. In. I'm still, I still only see the main web page instead of seeing the Oh, like it opened in a new window. window. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh -huh. uh, let me uh, reshare. Apologies for that. I'll just share my entire screen. Try and oh, no. okay. So now again, there's this uh, the main screen here where you build your screen, and then there's the blocks. You're hopefully you're seeing all that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go back to the designer. What I had done is uh, I had grabbed a button from here, and I just dragged it into the the scene. Um, then they show up as your components, and you can delete and uh, rename them. So I'm going to keep this button, and uh, we're going to call it play sound button so that we know what it does. Uh, we're also, so the elements are both visual elements and non-visual elements. And so we're going to take a look at um, oh now I've got too many windows open. Um, there, there we go. Oh I thought oh yes, Brenda. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you. Um, so we've dragged the button in and um, we're going to look for a sound. So we have, there's layout options, and then inside media, we have the sound option. So when I drag the sound option over, it's not going to show up inside the application. 
shows up here as a non-visible component. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows up over on the side here. Um, now, we this is where we choose the uh, sound. Uh, well, let me let me show you. I'm going to grab the sound in a moment. I'm just browsing the one. Uh, so we have our button, and then our button options are, um, you know, color and font and size and height, shape, all of those things. And then we can say text. So uh, play, play a sound. Great, and it's visible. Uh, so now we are going to jump over into our blocks and uh, what you see is you have a whole bunch of uh, options like control, logic, and so on. And underneath each one of these is a set of these puzzle pieces that fit within each other. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, the screen and then within the screen, these are elements that you add. And so these elements only, and their sub elements only become visible once you have added them to that other screen. Uh, so there's your components and the components on the screen. So we are going to uh, figure out what to do here. So when a uh, play sound button is clicked, do X, I think, or you could do focus or long click. Um, so these are different uh, actions or triggers within the system. So we're going to say, we're going to drag over here. Uh, when that button, the button that we named play sound button is clicked, do X. And so now we go to sound. And so within sound, we can say call sound, pause, play, resume. So we could do a whole bunch of things. Um, but we actually are going to go uh, play. And I can see that this has a little nub, and that nub fits within the um, within the construct of this other one. Yeah, you got some. All right. So apparently, I'm going to have a plane landing. All right. So I'm going to go to source, upload file, choose file, go to my downloads, plane landing. Uh, there we go and click uh, OK. So it's now uploading to the, um, to the app. And now we have a plane landing that should be called on the, the button. Now, if we want to see our project in action, uh, what we do is we can actually use the companion. So there's an emulator um, which will create um, a small version of the phone on your computer. In this case, it didn't. Uh, I don't have it set up. Or I've been using the uh, the companion. So for the companion, um, what I do is I have a app downloaded on my phone. Um, so. Let me uh, stop screen sharing for a second so that you can see on my phone. So uh, on my phone, I just have downloaded uh, MIT App Inventor Companion. And then it will have this uh, menu here where I can type in either the number or scan the QR code that is uh, associated. So I'm going to go ahead and I will scan. And you clicked on companion to get that um, QR code? Yeah, exactly. So the, the companion, the emulator is another option. Uh, I'm using a Chromebook, and I think it doesn't, you have to download some software to your computer. And so that's why I'm not using that option. Um, okay. And uh, and then you can eventually package the thing. So it, this only works as a connection. So uh, now you can see on my phone, I actually have the app running. And if I click play sound, okay. So I got I got the sound of an airplane landing when I uh, clicked that button. 
So this is a very rudimentary uh, concept, but one that you can see how you could build uh, you know, an app that uses a button to play a sound. Um, let me take it further. All right. Um, so as you can see, you have lots and lots of things. Where I get excited is with the uh, access to the all of these sensors. So not every phone's gonna have a barometer. In fact, most won't, but it's uh, on some phones they might. Uh, so you can see you have a barometer, a clock, gyroscope, uh, light sensors, magnetic field sensor, orientation sensor, um, thermometer, um, pedometer. Um, I would let's let's try the orientation sensor and see what we get from there, and maybe the accelerometer. Um, so each of these will have a little question mark next to it, and this gives you a pretty good description about what you are, uh, what the accelerometer is, and what sort of outputs it's going to give you. So an accelerometer measures acceleration. So that's movement of your phone or changes of its uh, orientation in space. So um, it's going to output, as it tells us here, the X acceleration, the Y acceleration, and the Z acceleration. Um, then when you go into the orientation sensor, uh, it's a little different in that it's trying to uh, derive from various sensors the uh, position of your phone, and it should keep that as uh, continuous. Um, whether or not the phone is moving or not is my understanding. And so these are given in degrees of uh, roll, pitch, and azimuth. And it looks like we have, uh, yeah, between 90 and uh, so those are the outputs that we'd expect in the X, Y, and Z. Um, now when we go over to blocks, we have uh, a new set of components. And so we can use this as a trigger, or we could use, say, a new button as a trigger. I'm going to actually put a new button in there. Um, new button. And so we're going to say, uh, we'll call it, we'll leave it button one. Um, so when button one is pushed, so now we pull that out here. And what do we want to do? So we have the sensor data. We're not using the sensor data to initiate it, so we don't need this block. Um, we could set the something to the sensor data. Um, let's let's figure out what we would put that in. So we're going to put a text box. So now we have a text box there. And so when we push button one. I want that text box to change. So oh, the companion's disconnected. So I'll have to reconnect it when we want to preview again. Um, so set text box text. So you can do lots of things about the text box, right? But we're going to set the text of the text box. So all right, when button one pressed, set text of the text box. and. What do we want to set it to? Let's set it to, what was that? We're going to use orientation one. We'll look at roll. All right. So uh, if we go back to the designer, um, the behavior I would be expecting we're going to go companion, and I'll reconnect this. Um, so now I'm connecting here. Okay, I've scanned the QR code, and I will jump back to. Presenting. Let's see 
what my uh, my phone has done. So we I see that we have two buttons on here, and let's uh, when I click that button, I actually have a number showing up here, and if I uh, click it at a different angle, I should have a new um, a new number showing up. So that's allowing me to uh, pull that sensor data. And of course, there's different axes. I could have it displaying that. I could also, if I wanted it to live update, uh, let's go ahead and uh, try and do it as a, a live feed, uh, a, a live activity thing. So rather than using, so we're going to put in all three of these. All right, three text boxes. And I'll go back to the designer. And rather than initiating it with a button push like we've done before, I am actually going to go to the uh, one of the other sensors. So I can use the accelerometer. And so when the accelerometer changes, now I just can grab this whole block and now I put it under here. I can leave this button, doesn't doesn't need to do anything. Let's go let's go back to the designer and hopefully my phone has stayed uh, active. So now you can see it's constantly feeding in um, some data on there. But what we haven't done is we haven't defined these fields. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop presenting real quick so you can see the... Uh, so here's... Here is what we have. We have one field constantly updating, and two other fields that are uh, that are dead, and that's because we haven't uh, we haven't set them up in the App Inventor. Um, now, inside of blocks, what I can do is uh, make a copy of this. Um, or, yeah, so there we go, copy. I'm gonna put that underneath and paste. And so now I can say text box two, text box three, and rather than roll, I'm gonna say pitch and I'm going to say angle. Uh, if we were trying to do something thoughtfully, we would go into more detail. Uh, now, as long as this stays connected, I should instantaneously see those new uh, elements showing up on my phone. And you can see those are, the, those are constantly there. Now, It's uh, important. So that's got some limited utility, being able to access those directly. Um, where it gets more powerful is, as you can see, um, we have lots of ways then to modify that input. So you can create a variable and then uh, manipulate that variable. Um, you also have various component plugins, like databases that you can store information to. Um, logic, so you can do various tests. Um, math, so you can do calculations. Uh, and you can impact things like uh, the background color or other elements in it. So uh, let's say that we wanted the um, screen to, or one of the buttons, to change color based on the orientation. Uh, so I would probably pull in three different colors here. So we're going to play with the color maker. And I am going to choose a, uh, we're going to add a canvas to this that should have the ability to change colors. Uh, do we see layout? media, drawing and animation. All right, there's a canvas. 
So a canvas is something where you can do animations within it. Um, and typically, you would have a sprite that's an image that can be moved around in the x, y, and z coordinates and have other things uh, happen to it. Um, so we'll go to blocks. And now we should have canvas. And set canvas color. Right, so now we're gonna put that in button one, perhaps. So button one's now gonna control that, set canvas color two. And we have these numbers, so we could set it to a definite color. Well, let's let's do that just for, for a test. Uh, let's see if this is still connected. It is. And uh, I'm gonna stay in the small window, but all right, so when I push the button, that popped up with a little red square. So I've got a very small canvas right now. Um, I can go back and I should be able to change that. So we're gonna say fill parent and fill parent. Fill parent, okay. So now it is filling a large space. And uh, when I click the button for the thing, we get a big red block. So what I wanna do though, is have that color change dependent on the position. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, these settings, the orientation setting, so roll, now these won't, we'd have to do some math if we wanted these to translate perfect to all the colors because remember that they come through as from 90 to negative 90 and so on. Uh, but I think we will probably get something uh, out of this. And I'm just doing copy and paste when I select these. Get rid of that number. And I can just drag it over to the uh, trash if I want, or I can press delete. And copy. Okay. So now if we did this right, and I will stop presenting so we could look at the phone together. If we did this right. Um, when I push button one, it should change a color to something relative to the position of the phone. So you can see that is in fact working. So if I, that's just kind of a random color, but um, I don't need the, the, but you can see the, uh, yeah, so it looks like red is almost like backwards there. Uh, and if I could mess with it, but the, um, if I wanted to, I could actually move that to the accelerometer. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to change it. So then I, rather than having to push the button, I'm going to have the background color change. Uh, and there it is. So now, okay. So now the accelerometer is initiating oh, I have to keep my phone awake. Um, and we have we have some like variability. It looks like blue is on this side, green is on this side. Uh, that's kind of red. Um, so we've got uh, interactivity between our sensors and the display on the screen. Uh, of course, you could do all sorts of uh, more complex things, but just displaying the color and that initiating that is a, a very basic level. Um, it at least gives you the concept. Uh, now, I'll just show you how you would package. So, say you um, really enjoyed that. You've been doing it with the connector, but the connector disconnects or the emulator, um, uh, you know, finishes. Um, so, when you distribute an Android app, you're distributing it as this uh, APK, uh, which is basically a package that puts all of the resources, the images, the audio, everything together. Um, and makes it 
into something that can be distributed. So you would click that and it would uh, produce a package, uh, something that you can share as a file or download to your computer. And you can install, send to somebody and they can install on their Android device. Um, it will provide a warning. So they will most likely have to go into their uh, settings for their Android and say, allow this to be installed as a uh, non-authorized program. Um, so I could access that file right here by scanning the QR code. It would pop open on my phone and then it would be a icon on my, uh, on my list of apps, just like any other app you can imagine. Uh, so that's the basic process for producing an app uh, and so on. I'd like to know what questions you guys uh, have or what ambition, now that you know how the basic functions of this work, where are your curiosities? Uh, what would you like to do with it or what would you like to learn next? Um, this is Jay. Um, I'm I'm interested. I, I saw this opportunity as a. I would like to create my own app, like starting like you know a prototype. Sure. Um, something with uh, I would say something you know to help you understand like what I'm looking for. Think of like a like a let go or like a um, or a, you know something app where you can uh, similar where you would have the features of being able to communicate, um, show pictures, multiple at the same time. Those are the kind of features that I'm looking to create a prototype with. Like a, like a chat system, you mean? Um, it would have one component in there. Um, I'm just trying to think of some apps that are like an offer up type thing or kind of. Um, yeah, you're uh, seeing ones I'm not familiar. I'm, not, I'm just not hip uh, enough, so I don't Craigslist? know. Craigslist, are you familiar with that? Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, some of the elements that you, I anticipate you would need if you were going to create that. So you would want multiple pages and you can add screens right, and name each of those screens. Okay. Uh, you would want to lay your screen out. So these are some tools here for how you would lay out your screen and you would create uh, boxes that are things that the user is going to fill out so they're going to have a text box and they're gonna type into that text box. You're gonna have instructions and styling around that text box. You might add things like sliders. Uh, these sliders could have, you know, how much are you willing to pay or something along those lines. Okay. Uh, so you might have uh, sliders. You might also be able to control the visibility of those things based on say a form field below or above. Uh, and that would be using the blocks logic to hide or display different things. Okay. So those should give you your user input. And then you're most likely going to go and do something with storage. Now, that's kind of beyond the scope of this very basic uh, mm -hmm. introduction that we're talking about here. But uh, there are databases that you can connect to. MIT hosts one for you um, on their Redis server. And you can store simple information and then recall that simple information to the user's app. And this would allow multiple users to share, uh, share data that's not just stored locally on that device. So mm -hmm. in the case of creating a Craigslist or something where you're posting, you have the user upload, uh, upload items. They would probably uh, do a camera. So you could just add a camera button and it will actually access the uh, the elements that allow you to upload a uh, upload an image and you would figure out how to store it in the database and you would uh, put all of those together into an app. Uh, I will say that although I think you can add these to the Android Play Store, um, so that people could access them. That generally, if you're going to be creating something uh, serious and optimized, most folks will uh, go through a more rigorous programming right. process uh, that will give you more options. You are gonna be somewhat handcuffed, but I would say that this is a, a great way for you without having to spend money on a programmer to be able to produce a proof of concept. 
okay. you may not be able to style it in all of the ways that you want, and you may not be able to get all of the features that you desire, but you're going to very likely be able to produce something that you can show to an investor, that you can have a group of friends and families and early testers use and give you feedback on, and you mm -hmm. can iterate and change that before you invest a lot of money in building a official app right. that would work on and you know that would work on iPhones and other uh, other devices. Right. Okay. So, thank you. It is a uh, great place to start. Does that make sense to you? It does. Yes. Thank you. Cool. And hopefully that is. Uh, uh, Hopefully that's helpful, and and not to deride this. There's there's a tremendous amount of things you can do on here, uh, but it, it can because it's made to be simple. It just can't give you the same level as what you would do with a, uh, a more typically used package that an app right. developer is doing. No, yeah, I figured this would just like you said. It's really you know proof of concept, you know MVP type thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I have some. Typed in comment, uh, print location and orientation Jay was asking about. Yeah, so that's uh, what I did with the uh, text box. Uh, did uh, Brenda or Jay feel free to type in? Did you guys have any questions or objectives? I'm not seeing any, but feel free to pipe in if you uh, if you have any that come up. Uh, so sensors are great to play with. Um, there are a, a bunch of tutorials that are available online. And so I would say the, the best next step is to go through and uh, follow those tutorials. They'll have you create some sort of sound or I think they actually do text to speech, um, which is a, is a good uh, option because it's flexible. You can have different user input and, uh, it can speak different things um, in those tutorials. So if you just go to the MIT App Inventor homepage, and then there's plenty of resources and tutorials underneath the uh, resources tutorials, and there's information at, aimed at uh, educators. So that's uh, that's those next steps. Uh, that basically covers everything that I uh, wanted to. It just gives you a taste inventor is and how you might get started with it. Uh, so I guess we can wrap up unless there's any other uh, questions or quandaries about the software and how you might get started. So uh, Jay says this could be amazing. He has a lot to learn about the outside web servers and hosting and so on. Um, Yeah, so uh, Brenda's using an Apple. It will not work on an Apple phone. It uh, does need uh, an Android phone. Sometimes you can get an older Android phone uh, inexpensively. There's also an emulator that you can run. Um, so on that drop-down menu, you can choose emulator, which is essentially a software-based version of a phone that pops up in a new window, and you can see what it would look like uh, on that phone although you're not going to get that same sense of orientation and those items. I think you can simulate them, but it is nice to be able to work off a real phone. Great. Well, without further questions, I think we can uh, wrap this session up. Uh, thanks for coming and be sure to check out the other uh, Make Haven intro sessions we have on the, on the list. Great. Thank you.